following program is sponsored by CBN. Coming up, America's mental health crisis. There are so many reasons that things are just going the wrong way. Here are the clinically proven ways you can change your brain and change your life. To ask yourself, is this good for my brain or bad for it? And diagnosed with MS. Her body would shake and quiver. The outlook was grim. The next step was to put me in a nursing home. How she was cured of an incurable disease on today's 700 Club. My friend said, God got this. Don't worry about it. He's got this. Well, welcome to the 700 Club. There's a new partnership forming on the world stage. Both China's president and Russia's president are in the middle of a three-day summit in Moscow. Xi Jinping comes under the guise of bearing a peace plan to end the war in Ukraine. Security experts say the two countries are in cahoots to shift the global balance of power away from the United States. CBN White House correspondent Abigail Robertson reports. President Xi Jinping seeks for his visit to be a fruitful one, although it's also drawing intense suspicion from the West as it shows deepening ties between Russia and China. Russian President Vladimir Putin rolled out the red carpet as he welcomed his, quote, dear friend to the Kremlin, the first major world leader to visit since Russia invaded Ukraine last year. The trip is seen as a major show of support for Putin, who has been isolated internationally for his invasion of Ukraine and now faces an arrest warrant from the International Criminal Court for War Crimes. The two leaders were all smiles as they greeted each other, followed by a more than four-hour meeting. Both leaders blamed the West for the conflict in Ukraine, with Xi calling for a peace proposal that favors Russia. President Biden recently weighed in on that proposal. I've seen nothing in the plan that would indicate that there is something that would be beneficial to anyone other than Russia if the Chinese plan were followed. And so the idea that China is going to be negotiating the outcome of a war that's a totally unjust war for Ukraine is just not rational. Western countries are also watching for signs of China increasing political, financial and military support to Russia following this week's visit. Both Russia and China are just defiant and they're continuing to uh, take action to transform the world in order to shift the balance of power to their advantage and away from the United States. Rebecca Koffler, author of Putin's playbook, Russia's secret plan to defeat America, tells CBN News she is not interested in peace. The Chinese are only happy to have two of their top adversaries, perceived adversaries, Russia and the United States, deplete their combat arsenals by waging this proxy war in Ukraine. And so uh, Xi Jinping is just simply elated to let this happen, and he will likely approve lethal aid uh, to Russia so Putin can continue his barbaric war on Ukraine. The U.S. has threatened severe consequences for China if it ships lethal weapons to aid in the war against Ukraine. In Ukraine, Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida began a surprise visit to Kyiv Tuesday, where he will meet with President Volodymyr Zelensky. On Monday, the White House called for China's leader to speak with Zelensky as well. She said he plans to do so, and Zelensky said he's open to discussing proposals for peace, but insists on Russian troops leaving all Ukrainian territory. Meanwhile, reporters question when Biden plans to talk to Xi. We'll do that at the most appropriate time. It's important that we keep those lines of communication open, particularly now when tensions are so high. The United States claims that if this visit ends in the two countries calling for a ceasefire, that will be unacceptable, claiming all it would do is ratify Russia's conquest thus far. Reporting from Washington, Abigail Robertson, CBN News. Well, there's a new player on the world stage, and that country is China. You look at what they did to reestablish diplomatic relations between Iran and, and Saudi Arabia, just when, when the world was on the verge of further isolating Iran uh, and reaching out to Saudi Arabia. 
Uh, we, we distance ourselves from Saudi Arabia, and they saw an opportunity, they seized it. They see another opportunity here, and that is a traditional rival, Russia, now dependent on them, uh, and can, can they solidify that dependency? When you look at the economic might of China, Russia is far diminished as a result of this war. Uh, this could be a long-standing partnership, but in that partnership, China will be the major player. Well, in other news, President Biden issued his first veto yesterday. His action could make an impact on your retirement plans. John Jessup has more on that story from our CBN News Bureau in Washington. John? Thanks, Gordon. The veto protects a controversial investment strategy called ESG, which stands for Environmental, Social, and Corporate Governance. Some large asset managers call it good business, while critics say it puts politics ahead of best returns for investors. CBN's Jenna Browder explains. ESG is the latest political acronym to get Washington's full attention. And after both the House and the Senate passed a bill to ban the investment strategy, President Biden signed his first veto, meaning ESG stands for now. The only criterion should be what gives you the best math, the best return on investment. Indiana Senator Mike Braun says that's not what you get with ESG, an investment strategy that takes into account a company's climate change initiatives, the diversity and corporate transparency, with a heavy emphasis on the climate part. Some of the largest asset managers, including BlackRock, call ESG good business. Conservatives, though, tend to disagree. Joel Griffith with the Heritage Foundation says the strategy politicizes investments, often at a cost to investors. If you look back for the last several years and track um, um, investments in ESG uh, type of funds versus investments in the broader stock market, you see that those ESG investments are underperforming the overall stock market. Some investment advisors also question if ESG would actually help the climate or move the world to a more sustainable future. There are other routes to take. For Christians, one solution is faith-based investing. Christians don't want to be controlled. They love freedom. They love biblical values. So to be told you must invest this way, you can't own fossil fuel companies, really doesn't sit well with them. David Spica is the president and CIO at Guidestone Funds, the country's largest Christian investment management firm. He points out a few ways Guidestone promotes biblical values. One is exclusionary screens, or not owning companies inconsistent with biblical values. Two, shareholder advocacy, a way to encourage companies Guidestone owns to adopt Christ-like values. And three, impact investing. Impact investing, we feel like, is really the future of faith-based investing. This is where we proactively invest in companies that are doing good, that are serving the underserved, that are promoting the growth of God's kingdom. Several states have already pulled money out of ESG investments, and at least 16 states are considering legislation to stop it. There are a number of states that are saying, look, if you are uh, a pension plan manager or public sector employees like firefighters and teachers and police, then you have to abide by a fiduciary duty to those um, clients, to, to the workers. And that fiduciary duty means that you cannot be considering ESG factors when it comes to making investments. As for President Biden's veto, Congress is unlikely to be able to override it because it would require the support of two-thirds of both chambers. In Washington, Jenna Browder, CBN News. All right. Thank you, Jenna. Some troubling news from the nation's tech industry. Major companies are announcing more job cuts. Seattle-based Amazon will cut 9,000 corporate jobs in the coming months. Last week, Facebook's parent company, Meta, announced it's laying off around 10,000 workers. The cuts come on top of the scare caused by the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank, where many startup tech firms had their funds. Well, as companies struggle to deal with a troubled economy, ministries in California are gearing up to bring spiritual hope. Ten evangelistic events are scheduled in stadiums across the state on April 1st and Palm Sunday. Their mission? To bring the Golden State back to God. CBN's Wendy Griffith tells us about Hope, California. We are going after the harvest. It's a big vision. Seven cities in California and three in the Baja region expecting to bring in thousands who want to give their lives to Jesus. 
think that's the goal. We've been networking across the state in all 10 regions. Seven of the venues are stadiums and three are actually iconic venues like the Capitol Steps in Sacramento, a pier in San Francisco, and a big festival venue park in Santa Barbara. And the rest are all at stadiums where it will happen simultaneously on April the 1st and 2nd, Palm Sunday weekend. Mondo, one reason you have so much hope for California is because God gave you a dream about California. Tell us about it. I saw the sun rising over the coast of California. The sun usually sets on the West Coast, but in this vision, it was rising on the West Coast. And, and that just told me that I believe God wants to do something on the West Coast, California, the entire coast, to be honest with you. And so the first part of that vision was the sun rising. The second part, I saw 10 stadiums simultaneously filled with Luke 4, 18 gatherings. Luke 4, 18 says, the Spirit of the Lord is on me. He's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, to, to uh, open the eyes of the blind, to set the captives free, to, to heal up and bind up the brokenhearted, um, to, to, to heal the oppressed. And so that's what we're doing in each of these regions, each of these stadiums. We're believing for the release of Luke 4, 18, which is the mission of Jesus. To gear up for the stadium events, they're calling 10,000 believers to California for Love Week, beginning Friday, March 24th, to be the hands and feet of Jesus and prepare the ground, so to speak, for Hope Fest. A thousand people in each region to blitz the streets of California with the love of Jesus. We'll have outreaches in every single city. And so uh, people can go to our website, hopecalifornia.us, sign up and, uh, and come. The Jesus revival of the 70s started in California. Is there That's hope right. for another revival in California? Absolutely. That's what we're praying for. I already feel like the sun is already starting to rise. I feel like things are already beginning to take place. God is already starting to move, but it's time to lengthen our cords and really go for the harvest like never before. This vision that the Lord gave me uh, is almost like seeing an entire state saved in a day. Wendy Griffith, CBN News. Exciting to see. If you want to learn more about Hope California events, just go to CBNNews.com. Gordon, back to you. Oh, hearty amen to what Mando was saying. What an incredible vision, the sun rising over California. Let's get ready for this great harvest. I'm going after the harvest, and let's have these events. But the focus should always be on the harvest. When times are difficult and times are tough, that's exactly the time to redouble your efforts in evangelism. And wouldn't it be wonderful at the same time this movie about the Jesus Revolution, all the um, baptisms that happened in the Pacific Ocean uh, 30, 40 years ago would happen again for California. Let's pray for that. Let's encourage that. And let's say amen. Terry? Well, still ahead, social media, COVID, and political brawls. The events of the last few years have led to a mental health epidemic like never before. Stay tuned to hear the easy ways you can retrain your brain to ward off depression and anxiety. And then later, the ties that bind. This woman's plan to win back her ex-husband, get high together. See how they were both delivered from their drug addictions. That's later on today's show. I want to discuss with you three important questions. The answers to which will determine the course of your life. Where do you come from? Who are you? Where are you going? Divine Direction, God's blueprint for your future. The latest audio teaching from Gordon Robertson. What does it really mean to be a child of God? What does it really mean to belong to God? What does it really mean that I'm going to God? In this teaching, you'll discover God's design for your life, your true identity in Christ, how to find purpose and direction, plus a daily devotional to strengthen your faith. When God looks at you, he's saying, you're exceptional. You are here for the very purpose that I thought of before the foundation of the world. When you have that picture of yourself, it changes everything. Divine Direction. God's blueprint for your future. Available now.
Superbook at the Big Church Day Out brought fun and laughter to hundreds of kids and their families, teaching them how to have a courageous, adventure-filled life with Jesus. Glitter Time, the Big Superbook Show, and Dance Offs with Gizmo, it was a weekend never to forget. Bring the festival fun home with you and download the app today. With Superbook episodes, games and activities, you can make an exciting walk of faith part of daily life for you and your kids, sharing Bible time together. Superbook reaches millions of kids in over 80 countries and over 50 languages, with more being added all the time. Become part of the worldwide Superbook family and help us reach even more kids with the life-changing good news of the gospel. Free to download, free to use. Download the app today. Tomorrow. CBN, the Christian Broadcasting Network. Happy 93rd birthday to a broadcast legend. I wanted to be part of God's plan. Celebrate the life of a man who made history. Past life uh, has touched so many millions of people and the plan that has brought the gospel to the ends of the earth. I just thank God for his life and for his ministry. Tomorrow on the 700 Club. Well, a steady bombardment of news, politics, social media addiction, these are all big factors in the historic rise of anxiety and depression in America. The good news, you can learn how to protect your mental health. CBN medical reporter Lori Johnson explains. America faces a mental health crisis unlike any time in its history, with far too many struggling with depression, anxiety, and more. There are so many reasons that things are just going the wrong way. Psychiatrist Daniel Amen blames a culture overwhelmed by hyper-divisive politics. Where people bully each other if they don't have the same beliefs. Information overload. The news is about negativity and frightening people. And social media addiction that can prove harmful to adults and children. That cause them to constantly compare themselves to false images, uh, to other people who are really pretty unhappy, but they make themselves seem very happy. That's just the beginning. Turns out there are dozens of things that can contribute to poor mental health. The good news is with the right information, we can fight back and expect better thoughts and feelings. Dr. Amen recommends a path to success in Change Your Brain Every Day. Brain and mental health, just like spiritual health, is a daily practice. Step one involves taking care of perhaps the body's most amazing organ where emotions and ideas originate. I have to focus first on brain health, which means you have to eat better, you need to exercise, and you need to like not drink and not do uh, magic mushrooms. You have to keep the physical functioning of your brain healthy. And when you do, it's so much easier to be happier. A brain healthy diet is 70% fruits and vegetables and 30% good protein like salmon and healthy fat like olive oil. And sugar is the enemy of brain health. Another way to protect your brain is by avoiding hits to the head, which can lead to traumatic brain injury. From falls, from car accidents, from fights. And there are other professions besides football players that have an increased incidence of brain trauma, especially firefighters. There's a very high incidence of depression and suicide among firefighters. Dr. Amen recommends a protocol that can help people recover from certain brain injuries. It includes fish oil, vitamin D, and in some cases, hyperbaric oxygen therapy. It significantly increases blood flow to the brain. Taking breaks from the smartphone to personally connect with nature and people can improve mental health, although it can be difficult for some. Being unable to put your phone down. Uh, there's actually studies that say people would rather give up sex than their phone. That's, that's a problem. Getting away from that screen can also dramatically improve your mood and thinking 
by consistently getting a better night's sleep. If you don't put blue light blockers on your phone, that blue light coming from your gadgets, your computer or your phone actually turns off the production of melatonin and makes sleep much harder. And finally, instead of letting our thoughts run wild, take control and steer them in the right direction. I start every day with today is going to be a great day. I direct my mind to help me rather than hurt me. At the end of every day, I say a prayer and then I go, what went well today? So while far too many suffer from depression, anxiety, and related issues, there are ways we can try to improve our mental health. Whenever you go to make a decision, just ask yourself, is this good for my brain or bad for it? Lori Johnson, CBN News. Well, way back in 2012, Facebook did a, an experiment. It was called emotional contagion is the, the psychological term. And if you can imagine a, a, a company hiring sociologists and psychologists to run experiments on you and I, uh, they, they viewed it as, well, we're experimenting against the data set, the database. But that's exactly what they did. And what they found is that when you fill your, your, the, the news feed, uh, the home page of a Facebook user with negative information, uh, negative information from uh, their group of friends or negative information from news, then the emotional contagion takes over and you can actually make that person feel bad. The flip it around, if you give them positive news from their friends, from their feed, as well as positive news for, uh, from the news of the day, well, then they will feel better. Uh, so as we look at our politics today, which seems to be driving us further and further apart, uh, where you're trying to demonize the enemy and you can't ever possibly make a deal with them, when you look at the fraction even within political parties where parties now have wings and they're trying to appease the wings instead of governing from the middle, then you can't help but get negative. Put on top of that a, a pandemic that's worldwide and you can't travel, you can't associate with people. All of these things have conspired to come together and give us a lot of anxiety. Here's some great news. You can overcome it through prayer. You can have moments in your day where you just ask God, could you encourage me? Could you be with me right now? And when you cast all your burden upon him, you'll find that he cares for you. One of the great things you can do to change how you think is have gratitude for what God has already done for you. And then ask him, well, what do you want me to do today? How, how do you want me to spread the good news today? And when you change your thinking to go that way, I'm going God's way, you'll have all that you need. Well, we've got a lot of medical advice. I'm going to hold this book up for you to show you how just how thick it is. Daniel uh, Amen's book is called Change Your Brain Every Day. It's that daily practice that leads to really good mental health. Uh, please avoid sugar, all of the things that are bad, but also watch what you take in. And when you take in the Word of God, you take in the presence of God, you take in the good news, well, then you can't help but be an overcomer. The book's available wherever books are sold. Terry? Well, up next, her ex-husband was hauled off to prison, and she was trapped in an even darker place. See the lifeline that rescued them both. That's next. And then later, seizures at the grocery store, seizures at Bible study. This woman's MS was literally out of control. Stay tuned to see how she was instantly healed. Plus, we're gonna be praying for you. That's coming up.
Did you know that if you are a UK taxpayer and you give to CBN, your gift could grow by 25%? Because of gift aid, it can. Every one pound that you donate, the government will give an extra 25 pence to CBN. Just fill out our gift aid declaration form online. Go to cbneurope.com forward slash gift aid and follow the instructions. Have questions? You can call us at 0300 561 0700 to talk to our team and register over the phone. Sign up for gift aid today. Nikki Thompson wanted to show her ex-husband the door. He had just been released from prison. Before that, he was guilty of lying, cheating, and drug dealing. Then she realized there was something different about him. And whatever it was, she wanted the same thing. By the time I met my husband, I was 20 with two boys, two different baby daddies, and just very broken. Nikki Thompson had been through a string of dysfunctional relationships when she met Tony. He was older, six years clean from a long history of drug abuse, and had custody of five of his six kids. We really did have a, a sweet courtship, and after a couple of short months, we decided that we were going to get married. The first couple of years were great. We were just blending our family. Tony had his kids, I had mine, and then we had Freddie. So it literally made us yours, mine, and ours. We took the kids in the minivan to games and the park. We went camping. We did all the things that a normal family would do. During that time, Tony started a construction company and hired friends from his past. We thought that we were gonna be able to influence them by our family-friendly lifestyle, right? Like we were gonna be able to show them our happy marriage and that we didn't allow smoking on our property and we didn't drink and we didn't do drugs and that we were going to influence them, but it was just the opposite. You know, that bad company does really corrupt good morals. And within a year of the construction company, uh, there was lying, infidelity, and uh, eventually drug dealing. The couple separated and later divorced as Tony went back to his former ways. I ended up experimenting with methamphetamine, and that became a, a full-blown addiction. Within a week, I called him up and said, hey, I know you're using, I want to get high too. Because in my own sick, twisted mind, I thought that would get me my marriage back. Like that was the one common bond, the thread that we did not have that would tie us together. And he came over and I was like instantly addicted. Nikki's drug use became a daily habit. At the same time, Tony was arrested and jailed for manufacturing meth. I got on the needle. You chase that, if uh, that first high, you find yourself doing things that you swore you would have never done and just going darker and darker and darker. I became suicidal while I was in jail. I was going through withdrawals the first several weeks there and blaming myself. Well, after a couple of weeks in the county jail, I was reading the Bible and I was able to watch the TV preachers on the TV. I was hearing stuff that I've never heard or I don't recall hearing in church. You know, as a young man or a child, I began to get really interested in it. There was something about this Jesus that he had loved me and that he'd forgiven me all the things that I'd ever done. I mean, I needed to hear that. I needed some acceptance. I was at such a low point that that was my lifeline. So I began to write Nikki letters and share with her what I was learning. Frankly, I just thought it was jailhouse religion. Like, I was basically like, you had your shot and you blew it. Like, your whole family is scattered because of the choices you made. And I didn't want to hear about his Jesus. I was actually learning about a new life. And suddenly I began to desire what this new life was offering. And that's the direction that I started going. When he started writing letters, further into it, he would start signing them, love always and forever, your husband, Anthony. And I was like, he's an idiot. Like, we're not even married. After serving 18 months, Tony was released from jail. With his new faith in Jesus, he longed to restart his life with Nikki and went to see her. I was bombarded with thoughts like, look at how he's looking at you. Like, he's here to judge you. He can probably see the blown out vein. Like, he is not going to stand by while you use drugs and just sleep around with whoever. He will take Freddie from you. And so before I could slam the door, our son Freddie came running in because he heard Tony's voice. You know, he was 18 months old whenever I went to prison. He'd only seen me a couple of times while I was in prison. And three and a half years later, all he had to do was hear my voice, and he knew who I was. That tugged at my heart. 
and he picks Freddie up and he puts him on his lap and he starts saying things like, Freddie, mommy and daddy love you. And mommy and daddy really wanna hear what you have to say. But first, mommy and daddy have to talk. So we need you to be the obedient boy that you are. Go in the other room and when we're done, we'll come hear what you have to say. And I had never witnessed that. Like that was the kindness and goodness of God on display for me to see he didn't react in rage. He didn't react in anger. That was complete, total self-control. All I could think was, it's not jailhouse religion. It's real, like something has changed in him. And if he has that kind of peace, I want that too. After a few months, the couple remarried. And eventually, Nikki also became a follower of Jesus. They've been set free from past addictions and are experiencing a rich marriage with God as the foundation. To be able to speak with my wife about what she was learning and hearing her share about the, the gospel back to me instead of always me sharing the gospel to her. And then to, to watch her do that with other people, seeing her share the gospel with complete strangers. That was my milestone, the very first one between the differences between the marriages. The really great thing about having our perspective is we have that first marriage without Jesus where things were okay but of course they failed, they crumbled. And now that we have this new marriage with Jesus, this covenant where we know it's not just a contract, but it is actually for life, we have this beautiful commitment to one another and we truly do enjoy being married because we are created in His image, one man, one woman. Covenant marriage, it's a beautiful thing. You know, God has always had a plan from the very beginning for how it should be, how he wanted it to be, for the, the life he wanted us to be able to live. And when we try to reproduce that on our own, we just get deeper and deeper into the muck and the mire of our own selfishness, don't we? I mean, until so you find yourself really just so jaded about everything in life that it's hard for you to even understand that there was a good plan in the beginning. You know, you see Nikki struggling with that, and in Tony, you see the grace and the mercy of God. You know, when he came to know the Lord, when God extended that to him, when he was changed and then he turned to her and just didn't give up, you know, just stayed, just believed, just stated, stated the goodness, stated the truth, stated the dream. God began to move and to change. God's plan for us is so rich, it's so good, it's so satisfying to us. Everything that He prepared for us from the beginning was meant to bring us the joy of His presence, that we would know the joy of knowing Him, that He would be a part of our relationship, a part of our lives. You know, you heard Nikki talk about that. Is this is, it was okay when we did this on our own, which then led to a lot of issues. But boy, when we did it God's way, everything changed. Everything was different. Everything became what it was supposed to be in the beginning. You know, this isn't just about relationships, though maybe you're relating to that if you're somebody who's struggling in your relationship right now, and maybe you can see that God has a plan for it to work out the right way, but it's more than that. God's plan is to invade our lives with His presence. It's to help us understand how amazing He is and how wonderfully created we are with intention, with purpose, with a plan. And when we walk away from that, we get into that dark place that they got into. But we come back. We come back to who He is. We come back to His invitation. We come back to arms that are stretched out to us. And we say, Jesus, I want to know you. I want to do it your way. And I need to ask you, not just I want to, I need to ask you to forgive my sins. For they are great. They are many. You know, God isn't so much dwelling on where we've been and what we've done as the understanding that he is a savior. Jesus died on the cross for you and for me, suffered unimaginable unimaginable pain, separation from his father, separation from who he was really and created to be so that you and I could have that. Today, his invitation to you is, will you come? 
Will you let me fix the things in your life that are broken? Will you let me come in and heal you? It's a healing, really. It's a spiritual healing, a psychological healing, a physical healing. Whatever you need, come to him today. His arms are stretched out, but start with this, Jesus. I am a sinner in need of a savior. Thank you for what you did for me. Thank you that you saw me in the ugliness of my own making and you loved me anyway. I'm asking you to forgive my sins. I'm asking you to come into the middle of my being, the heart of me, the mind of me, the soul of me. Teach me your ways. Jesus, I want to live for you. I want to live with you. And I know I need your Holy Spirit to do that. So will you fill me with your spirit? Will you invade my life with you? And God willingly, I trade everything I have and all that I have for all that you are. Teach me your ways. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. If you've prayed that prayer, now what? What do you do? Well, we've prepared a packet for you. How do you live with Jesus, for Jesus? This is yours and it's free when you call our number, 1-800-700-7000. If you're struggling in your marriage, by the way, ask also for the brochure on love and marriage. It's free as well. Call now. There's a friend waiting to take your call. Gordon? Well, still ahead, five years of agony gone in an instant. Hear the prayer that delivered this woman from MS. Her story is coming up later on today's show. I start drinking alcohol under the pretense of I'm celebrating. I wasn't celebrating, I was medicating myself. I felt completely defeated and broken. I was weak in my relationship with God and I was just a weak human being and God got further and further away. When you feel his presence and you walk away from it, there's guilt, there's shame, but there's also a sort of a sense that it'll never happen for you again. My daughter, who was 12 at the time, she said, Daddy, I want you to be happy. I want you to know Jesus. God started to reveal himself to me again, and he started to melt away the ice that was my heart. I'm trying to talk people into this life that is second to none. This life of feeling Christ's presence in your life. The latest audio teaching from Gordon Robertson, Divine Direction, God's blueprint for your future. I can get filled with the joy, the love, peace of the Holy Spirit because I'm made in His image. That's what God wants. That's what He intended from the beginning. I'm supposed to manifest Him in human form. These are wonderful, energizing words. I want you to understand that you are God's best, that He uniquely made you for this time, for this time in human history. You are the only one to accomplish the mission that He has specifically crafted you to fulfill. I want you to know you are God's best. Divine Direction, God's blueprint for your future. The latest audio teaching from Gordon Robertson. Available now. Welcome back to Washington for the CBN News Break. Wyoming is now the first state to ban abortion pills. Wyoming's governor signed a bill outlawing them alongside a new measure banning almost all abortions in the state. Texas is now awaiting a judge's ruling that could overturn the FDA approval of abortion pills in that state, which now account for more than half of all abortions in the United States. Well, an American missionary who was kidnapped in the African nation of Niger six years ago is now free. Jeff Woodkey, who was kidnapped and held by Islamic extremists, was finally released yesterday alongside a French journalist who'd been held for two years. The Christian aid worker said, quote, I thank God, first of all, and after God, I thank the government of Niger, the U.S. government, and France. 
The United States said no ransom was paid for his release, but it comes just four days after Secretary of State Antony Blinken visited the region. Woodkey's wife released a statement praising God for answering the prayers of Christians nationwide. Well, you can always get the latest from CBN News by going to our website at CBNNews.com. Gordon and Terry will be back with more of the 700 Club right after this. Kids, do you love games? And do you love discovering things? Yeah. Well, do you? Yeah. Then you're gonna love this. It's the new free Superbook Kids Bible app. You can play games, watch videos, find answers to your questions, and a whole lot more. The new Superbook Kids Bible app. Free downloads available on iTunes now. Tomorrow. CBN, the Christian Broadcasting Network. Happy 93rd birthday to a broadcast legend. I wanted to be part of God's plan. Celebrate the life of a man who made history. Past life uh, has touched so many millions of people. And the plan that has brought the gospel to the ends of the earth. I just thank God for his life and for his ministry. Tomorrow on the 700 Club. Baby Keenan wasn't like most other children. When he was born with a cleft lip, his family was devastated. They searched the internet for help, and that's where they found Operation Blessing. 22-year-old Amel blamed herself after her son Keenan was born with a cleft lip. I remember I was about four months pregnant and fell off my scooter and broke my right arm. I went to see a traditional bone therapist and then consumed some medicines, hoping it would heal. Perhaps it was the medicine that caused my son to be born like that. After he was born, Anel asked her mom to help take care of Keenan. Both realized how difficult it would be for him as he grew up. It was hard for him to drink. The formula poured out of his nose. It's hard for me to imagine the rejection he will face when he grows up. At first, I thought that he would never have a normal life like other kids. The family knew Keenan needed an operation, but that seemed impossible. This is Keenan's dad. I work as a motor taxi driver and only earn about seven to ten dollars a day. I knew we could never save enough for his operation. Amel searched on the internet hoping to find help for her baby. That's where she discovered Operation Blessing Indonesia. A doctor had told me the sooner we got an operation for our son, the better. Then I learned that Operation Blessing provided free surgery. I was really happy when I learned that they would help. Operation Blessing arranged for Keenan to receive free cleft lip surgery. Within a few weeks, his lip was healing nicely. The family reports that Keenan is now able to eat and drink without choking, and he's gaining weight too. As a mom, I can't express how thankful I am to Operation Blessing and all the donors who made the surgery possible for our son. If you're a 700 Club member, you are all the donors who made that possible. We want to say thank you to you. I know that you all have such a heart to touch the world with the love of Jesus. And through the 700 Club, you're able to do that in such practical ways, as well as bringing the message of God's love right along with it. To those of you who haven't joined, we want to invite you to come along with the rest of us. We are out to change the world, and it's happening, and you can be a part of it. Listen, do something today to make a difference in the world. The world. That's a privilege we all have, and what an opportunity to do it in a way that really matters. When you join, we want to send you Gordon's teaching called Divine Direction, God's Blueprint for Your Life. Wouldn't you like to know what God has in mind for you? This will be a great teaching that will lead you down that path and into the Word of God, and we want you to have it. It's our gift. It's our way of saying thank you for caring about other people. So there's the number, 1-800-700-7000. Just call and say, I want to join the 700 Club. We'll get the gift out to you right away. Gordon? Coming up next, hope and healing. This woman thought both were in short supply after five years of suffering with MS. See why she changed her mind after a visit to a prayer service right after this. New 
from Gordon Robertson, Divine Direction, God's blueprint for your future. If you are in Christ, you are a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. We can go boldly to the throne of grace and receive our requests. The King is always available for his children. We belong to God. Divine Direction, God's blueprint for your future. Available now. Remember for a moment what it was like to be a child. You believed every story you were told. You saw a world full of endless possibilities. What stories will the world's orphaned and at-risk children believe? We believe the Bible tells the only story truly worth believing. We believe that every child should have the opportunity to dream, the chance to take challenges and turn them into possibilities, the chance to stand on the promises of God, to recognize their place in the greatest story ever told. They have their whole lives ahead of them. Theirs is a world of endless possibilities. They are looking for a story to believe. We will tell them that story. Will you join us? Well, March is MS Awareness Month, and we should all be aware of what the devastating impact of this disease is on people and pray for there to be a cure. Well, Marie Spencer knows exactly what that terrible disease can do to a body. She, she suffered with it five years. She had seizures multiple times a day. She needed caretakers around the clock. And while her friends told her that she could be healed, Marie refused to believe it. I would have seizures in grocery stores, in restaurants, all over the place. They finally put me on something that would slow them down a little, but I still had them three to five times a day. After suffering a seizure at work, Marie Spencer was diagnosed with secondary progressive multiple sclerosis, a disease doctors told her might eventually take her life. Friends and family witnessed the toll it took on Marie. She was in bed 24 seven all day. If she wanted to get around anywhere, she got on her uh, scooter and a caretaker had her help her get on there. Marie used to be pretty much bedridden. She had caretakers around the clock. I was existing just existing, going through life every day, existing without a purpose or a destiny. And um, the next step was to put me in a nursing home. Her friend Julie, who is a Christian, gave Marie the Bible on tape and encouraged her to listen. It just was uplifting to me. I would just listen to it over and over and over. Mar Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, just over and over and over again. It just, it kind of gave me hope. You know, gave me, gave me something that I never had before. Marie started going to a Bible study with her friend. It was very common for Marie to have a seizure, you know, during the Bible study. She sometimes would pass out. Her body would, you know, shake and quiver, and she would be exhausted afterwards. And they would just love me. They would just meet me where I was at. They would love me, and they would just... Um, tell me about the Lord. Her friends prayed for Marie to be healed, despite her worsening condition and doctors' grim prognosis. And they said, you know, God could heal you. And these women were telling me, and I got offended. How dare you put hope where, where they absolutely say the prognosis is, this is what's going to happen. How dare you put so much hope in my life? We prayed for Marie because we wanted her complete and whole. And, you know, we believed God and had more for her. But the more she listened to the Gospels and attended Bible study, the more she became open to supernatural healing. Marie eventually agreed to go to a Women's Aglow healing service. Before the service, Marie got alone and prayed. I prayed a simple prayer. That's the only prayer I really knew to pray was, Lord, I'm ready to receive everything you have for me. And that's that's pretty much all I said. But as the service began, Marie had the worst seizure of her life. I ended up on the floor and my friend said, God's got this, don't worry about it, he's got this. 
the ladies came over and prayed for me, and um, you know, and Jesus took the seizure away. Marie asked to receive Jesus into her life and also prayed to be completely healed of MS. Immediately, she says she felt something leave her body. And she looked at me straight in the eye and she said, you foul spirit of MS, you come out of her right now in the name of Jesus Christ. And it went right out of the, the side of my head right here. I got up and walked very quickly through all these ladies and I was walking and then I went into the hallway and I ran as fast as I could back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And as I was running, the Holy Spirit was telling me, you're healed, you're healed, you're healed. And I was crying and it was just incredible. One minute I'm, I'm not walking or talking or anything. The next minute I'm like, I am now. No seizures, no nothing. I remember when my mom came home and said she was healed, me and my brothers and my dad kind of looked at her and went, what? And then she got up and started walking around. We were telling her not to do that and she might fall, but she just kept doing it and we were extremely happy. I knew Marie before her healing and to see her now is un unbelievable, but it's, you know, God's, God can do that. Marie says her entire life has changed since her healing. She now is actively involved in healing ministries and takes mission trips to Panama. Jesus living in me and the Holy Spirit doing the work, it's like a lot better, <laughs> definitely. It's awesome to see who she is now, you know, that she isn't just satisfied being healed. She's out ministering to people and God's using her. I haven't had a seizure in eight years. No matter what disease or disorder, Jesus is real. He is our healer. He says it in his word. I believed him and I received it. By his stripes, we are healed. And he says, we are, not you might be, we are. So I happen to believe that. The wonderful, I happen to believe that. Put your faith on some great facts. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever would believe on him would not perish, but have everlasting life. Here's baby Jesus born in a stable in Bethlehem, born from Mary who said, be it unto me according to your word. That baby grew up to be a man and in that process lived the sinless life. His blood is divine. And he chose to go to the cross for you and me. He chose to give himself willingly. And by his stripes, we are healed. It's the blood of Jesus, the new covenant in his blood that seals the deal. It's the one that he made. He swore by his own body, this is my body, this is my blood, I give it to you. He didn't stop there. He rose again from the grave, and he led captivity captive. He made a triumphal entry into heaven, showing all the powers on this earth, who's the boss, who's in charge. All power and authority has been given to him. When Jesus comes into your life, demons have to live. Old habits melt away. All your diseases get healed. All of your iniquities get forgiven. It's absolutely wonderful what he will do for you if you just say yes. Now, there's some things in Marie's story that to a modern mind, we want to think, well, disease is caused by germs. There's got to be some virus or some bacteria or some underlying dysfunction. When you get the, what, what happened to Marie, that a thing left her, she felt it leave, and when it left, she was healed. Now, that's the Bible way. We, we, we look at things and say, this was done by the enemy, but what is now going to happen is the glory of the Lord is going to be revealed. Now, Terry and I are going to agree together. You've heard the gospel. You've heard within that story everything you need to know. Let's believe, just as Marie believed, let's believe. Let's believe what Jesus has done for you. 
Let's come into agreement on that, and God will do the rest. Let's pray. Lord God Almighty, we come to you, and we claim the authority that you have given up to us as believers in Jesus Christ, that by your stripes we are healed, and with that authority we lay hands on ourselves and we say out loud, be healed. You have given us authority over all the power of the enemy. With that authority, we say, evil spirit, leave my body now. You have no control over me. You must go. Jesus, please come into my heart. Make my body new again. Make me resonate with your power your deliverance. I ask for it now in Jesus' name. Son of David, have mercy on me. We bind every spirit of infirmity, every spirit that's oppressing their thoughts, their, their mind, their actions. We command it now in Jesus' name to leave them, and they would be every bit whole from this day forward. Mm -hmm. Do it now, Lord God, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. amen and amen. If you've been healed, let us know. Call us 1 800 700 7000. Here's a word from 1 Peter Give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares about you. For all of us here, God bless you. We'll see you again tomorrow. It was uh, one night after a gig. I started getting a little bit of a stomach ache, and before I knew it, you know, I had uh, major intense pain and 106 temperature. I was just afraid I was gonna die, and I didn't feel, feel like I had really served my purpose for God on this earth. I remember the only thing that really got me through was saying the Lord's Prayer, and it was like a light came into a very black, dark hole. When He takes over our life like that, we're lifted up above our pain. If you need prayer or would like to partner with us, call the CBN Hopeline today. For viewers in Australia, call 02-7908-0700. If you are in New Zealand, please call 04-488-0700 or visit our website at cbnaustralasia.org. If you are in the UK, call 0300-561-0700 or visit our website at cbneurope.com.